Uh, hello, you're tuned into Raw 1251am. I'm Charlie, I'm Head of Publicity for the station, and I'm joined here by uh, James, who is Sport Editor for The Boar, and uh, Matt and Richard from Odd Shape Bulls. So, hi guys, how are you doing? Good, thank yeah, you. Very good. well, cheers. Good. We've just seen a cracking crackin snippet from, a, from the show. Uh, so, the first thing, just for any listeners at home who don't really know much about the show, could you give us a little summary of what it's all about? Uh, it's about a young rugby player, James Hall, who... Um, is outed in the media as gay and but it, the the big difference is that he's young he's at the start of his career and it's how he can deal with that and the family pressures and the media pressures and how that affects him cool um and we were just wondering richard obviously you're the writer of the play we were wondering where that inspiration came from yeah uh the inspiration came uh quite a few years back now when i was playing on my university rugby team and there was a fresher join the team who was, was an openly gay kid and was bullied off the team by our club pra- uh, captain and president at the time. Um, and it really opened my eyes. I'd not witnessed uh, abuse like that before and, and, and always thought of rugby as, as being better than that. And it set me off on this uh, story of, of uh, a professional rugby player dealing with these pressures. Cool. That's really, that's like really like touching story actually um i mean matt how did you sort of was there an audition process to getting involved what what made you want to get involved with this with this uh show um yeah well it it it, it popped up and i was very interested by it because i've got a a strong uh, background in rugby and things and so i thought yeah i could play a rugby player I've, I've, i've been a rugby player for quite a few years um and then because i've i've experienced these sorts of things, not personally myself, but um, not necessarily that exact kind of thing, but uh, a, a slightly wrong attitude towards certain things. I was a dancer as well. I went to an all boys school. And so you you, you get kind of surrounded by the odd like um, phrase and, and things like that. And so when this sort of thing came up, I thought, yeah, it's a very important issue. It's a very relevant issue. So I was like, yeah, definitely let's um, let's go for it. <clears throat> uh, I wanted to ask, uh, you said on your website that you often get people who are, are struggling with the same issues come to you after shows and contact you. Have any of these people or anyone else, in fact, uh, contacted you to say that your show has actively helped them? One one that stands out for me was when we went to Edinburgh um, last year, 2015, wasn't it? Oh, goodness. Uh, <laughs> 2015, we went to Edinburgh and uh, an American came up to me and he had this big jumper with a load of signatures on it. He was like, oh, can you sign my jumper, please? It's, uh, I've been to the Fringe for years, and uh, I've got the signature of everyone who's performed, you know, just in case. Um, <laughs> and uh, and so, I, so I signed it for him, and he, he just started crying. And I was like, you right, mate? Was, I didn't think I would smell that bad or anything. And, um, uh, and he was like, it just, it just complete, it's exactly what I've been through, what I've seen. Um, he was like, I, I came out to my rugby team and I experienced all sorts of hell sort of thing. Um, and it just, I, he was just very thankful that he got to see it. And um, yeah, no, so that was one that really kind of stuck with me because I, I really felt like, <clears throat> not necessarily we, we may have helped him kind of get, get through it or something like that, but because uh, he said he's already been through it, but it was just quite nice that we hit the nail on the head. Sort of on that, obviously, um, from what I gathered, you two are both straight males. Yeah. Um, what would you say that sort of people in sport who are straight and have this privilege, how would you say that they can help sort of tackle homophobia, biphobia, racism and everything within um, sport and, you know, life in general? Uh, Richard? <laughs> hiya. Um, yeah, I I really like the term ally that's been being used a lot these days of of just being vocal in your support and I think that was that was something we've just been touching on. But this idea that it's often there's a silent majority that are accepting and, and lovely and friendly and, and want to help um, uh, in any way. Well, as I say, want to help in any way they can. Um, often they're, they're too quiet when, when these issues arise and they're too, um, too lenient on those who, who are causing offence. Um, I think that's... Yeah, that's the the main thing is actually being vigilant and 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 being vocal in your support and and always letting people know that they're not alone. Matt, anything to add? 
Um, no, yeah, no, I just think it's about exactly what Richard said about kind of speaking up when something's said, speaking up and telling people about it because I think a lot of people would appreciate be, being told and kind of uh, often these sorts of comments are made from ignorance. They come from a place of ignorance. And I think if you very calmly, not aggressively, but just talk to them about it, and then you might, you might be surprised by the conclusion that you reach. Uh, and leading on from that, I don't know if you caught a couple of months ago, ex-footballer Chris Sutton said that there's never been a better time for a footballer to come out specifically. Basic, basic question, do you agree? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I, I do agree. I, th I think there will be better times in the future, but I think it's purely the best time because it's present day sort of thing. Uh, and I think that's a testament to how, to what the various programs are doing and, and charities and things like that, I think. Um, I think if a footballer were to come out now, the whole community would gather around him um, at, or her. I mean, I, I know there are female footballers that are, are, are openly gay, so it's not as much of an issue there. But I think um, certainly for a, a male footballer, um, I think if they, I, th I think he's absolutely right. But there will be better times because it will just keep on going forward. Yeah, Richard, what would you what would you say to that? Um, yeah, I I completely agree. Actually, I think now would be a great time. We've had we've had such a snowball effect over the last couple of years. Um, I mean, Gareth Thomas was a while back now, but then I remember. Um, you know, I, I've, this is one of those things that I paid a lot of attention to because of the nature of this being my line of work. And, and I remember pitching this play to someone on the day that Tom Daly came out. And yeah. over the coming weeks, Thomas Hitzelsberger, Casey Stoney, Michael Sam, all came out and there was this snowball effect. And then actually while we were in Edinburgh last time, both um, Keegan Hurst and Sam Stanley, two rugby players, both came out during the time we were performing it. And, you know, we've, we've really felt like we've been on the inside of it. And um, it's been quite amazing to, to witness all of this happening. But I think, yeah, right now, to keep the momentum going, I think, um, and, and, you know, people boast the, the knowledge that there were openly gay players playing in the Premier League. They just want the media to keep silent about it. And I think someone, someday very soon, will take the brave step to, to be the first one to do that. I've, I've a lot of faith in that and I think that would be a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. um, just quickly, going back to the play itself, um, why did you format it in the way you did as opposed to something else and why, why a play rather than say a promotional video online or you know, so a social media campaign? Just for a bit of context there, the play itself is all based around sort of one guy acting as most of the characters with using voiceovers, isn't it? Yeah, yeah cool, just context. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I mean, it's, it's, it started for me when I first started writing it was, was as a screenplay. Um, and I think, you know, when you do this sort of work, it's quite hard to, uh, to get things up and running. And um, really doing a, doing a one-man show was, was a financially viable option at the time. <laughs> um, but at the same time, it, it, was, it was a story that I just thought, to put this character in isolation on a stage and to really see uh, the internal conflict as well as, you know, external influences um, would be something that would be quite moving. And I think I, think I was right in that uh, idea um, because it's really picked up and it, and it has reached audiences that um, it might not have reached if we tried to go a different way with it. So, uh, yeah, that, that was the thinking. Matt, as an actor, how did you feel sort of performing these kind of things? Because obviously you've put on a lot of accents for this show and all sorts. So what, how did you feel? I've seen a couple of one-man plays before I did this and um, I've always liked uh, the idea of it. I've all, when I was going through drama school, I was like, I'd love to do a one-man play to see, just to kind of test myself, see what it's like, see, see what the crack is. And when this one came up, I was like, yeah, bang on, let's do it. And um, I think... With as far as character goes, I just started with what I knew. Um, played in the, played in the rugby team a very long time myself, so I know some of the stereotypical characters you get in there. Kind of the big, <laughs> the the kind of the big leader, that's the captain, the big dog. yeah, <laughs> the little joker who'll just say those little like, annoying comments, <laughs> um, and kind of like the mum and dad just mm. made the my mum and dad and all that kind of stuff. So it's um, at first it's daunting. You've got sixty pages of script that 
you've got to learn. Usually when you get a script, you're like, oh, I don't have to worry about those 10 pages, mm -hmm. I'm not in that yeah. scene. <laughs> For this one, it was 60 pages and every cool. word that was in that script, I knew I had to say. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but then obviously when you look at it like that, it's like, oh my God, but you just take it scene by scene and bit by bit and it all comes together. But um, yeah, no, it was, it was a challenge, it was, it was a task, but um, I've really enjoyed doing it. Yeah. Mm. What was your favorite accent from, uh, from playing it all in? Could you give us a little sample? Um, <laughs> my favorite, well, I think it's not necessarily my favorite actor, but one of my favorite characters is Jonesy, the, the little annoying one from the team. <laughs> He's Welsh, because uh, I purely, I saw the name Jones, I was like, that's yeah. a Welsh name, so let's go Welsh. <laughs> uh, makes my life easier. Um, and he's, uh, he's probably the most narrow-minded. Yeah. Uh, sorry to all your Welsh listeners out there who are currently cringing at this. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, he's, he's fun, Jones. I like how he's, uh, his reaction to it is very, it's probably the most common, I'd say. Let's front it up with a bit of banter, a bit of comedy, a bit of uh, um, when he talks about threesomes and uh, he talks about... <laughs> Um, that was a bit that wasn't in there, mainly my fault, um, about, <laughs> um, about uh, uh, Elton John and, and stuff like that. And um, I think that's a, that would be the most normal reaction of a lot of people. So I, I think that's why he's one of my favourites. Um, and finally, obviously, we've talked about sort of what people with privilege can do. What message would you want to send out to anybody, um, any minorities that are listening? I mean, particularly any... Uh, LGBT people as it's message of the play what message would you send to them sort of uh, d if they're in the kind of situation that the main character was in the play what would be your your message um I think that that you have more allies than you know um I think that's that's a strong thing to always remember is is that uh you're not alone and I think one of the messages we we say at the end of the show is um that actually it's it's those confused kids who feel alone that need to know that then they're, they're not um and there's nothing wrong with but that there's nothing wrong with being confused there's nothing wrong with not knowing where your place is in the world but you will find it and there will be people there to help you anything to add matt yeah no just just exactly that like don't be afraid and and if someone does um if someone does come out in, in, in your team or something, then just be wholly accepting and, and just get behind them. Even possibly, I think one of the greatest reactions you could do would be like, yeah, all right, cool. And then just carry on, don't make a big deal of it. If they want to make a big deal of it, then then do that, then look kind of, but I'm sure they don't. And so that that for me will be one of, one of the best ones. I, I, I always love it when I hear stories of people saying, um, because I've had a couple of my friends come out and then we'll just be like, yeah, we know. Like, <laughs> I think just move last, on. Yeah, I think you're the last person to, to, to realise that. Um, <laughs> uh, so, um, which I, I, I always quite like. But yeah, I think that, that's the best way. Mm. Obviously, it can be seen as quite um, um, ignorant sort of thing and quite uh, uh, not very sensitive if you just go, yeah, all right, shut up. Um, but yeah, I think be open. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you to James from the board for helping me out with these questions. And um, if you want to see, uh, find out any more about Odd Shape Balls or any other productions that these guys are getting involved in, uh, you can check out their Twitter at Plain Paper Productions. Is it? Yeah. Plain Paper Theatre. I apologise. Uh, spelt like the aircraft, not the uh, normal paper. And um, that's all from us today. Thank you very much for joining us, guys. Thank you to James. And yeah, thank you. bye. Thank you.